All right, this is chapter 13.7. This is on tangent plane approximation. Better phrase might be approximation using tangent planes. That's all right. So what I want to do is sort of first do a review um, or a reminder maybe of um, sort of the analogy in Calc 1 because we sort of did a similar thing in Calc 1. Remembering what we did and um, how we did it will help us see what's going on here. So remember in Calc 1, suppose I have a, like a nice continuous function with a nice derivative, right? So suppose f of x, we'll just say f of x is a function. I'm going to leave out too many details. So something really simple, maybe like this. That's f of x. So suppose we pick a point. So we, we pick um, an x value, x0. And if we build the tangent line, say construct the tangent line to f, at x0. Right, so then we have something like this. So let me pick a point. Um, let's say this will be our x0. We got to here, we construct the tangent line. So the observation I'd like to make is if your x values stay close to x0, then the function and the tangent line are close. And that's just basically if you're looking sort of in a little circle, little area right around here. You can see, like, hey, if I'm close to x0, then um, then these two are close. If I stray too far away, like if I'm over here, for example, then uh, then it's not so good. But basically, intuitively, as long as um, x sub 0 is close to x, I realized I made a little typo here. Sorry, as long as x is close to x sub 0, then f of x is close to the tangent line. So a little more formally. If, let's say if x is approximately x0, then f of x is approximately the tangent line. Tangent line. So then we might ask, okay, well, what is the tangent line? Like, what is the expression? Right, so how do we do it? We find a, a point and a slope. Right, so the point Right, the point um, where they meet, or well, the point that we construct the tangent line at, is x sub 0, f of x sub 0. And the slope is f prime of x sub 0. So using the point slope formula tells us that we do y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. And we can solve this. So basically, in a nutshell, um, we could now say if x is approximately x sub 0, then f of x is approximately this thing on the right. And so that's basically tangent line approximation, right? If you stay close to the original anchor point, then your function stays close to the tangent line. Another way of looking at it is that the right-hand side is also the beginning of a Taylor expansion. Right? This isn't really relevant for what we're doing here, but for those of you that are interested, because there'll be an analogy coming up, is uh, this is the degree one Taylor polynomial in calc two you almost certainly uh, expanded this and went further with more derivatives and factorials and all kinds of stuff. We won't do that here, but but uh, we'll do the first step 
right? So what we'd like to do is then say like, okay, how does this all work in um, by a function of two variables? So take a second to sort of think, look through the two pictures that we have. And what I want to do next is sort of draw a function of two variables and sort of build out the analogy and see what comes out at the end. All right, so I'm going to clear the screen and then go to a tangent plane, go to a function of two variables, build a tangent plane, and so on and so forth. So let's say two. Um, tangent plane approximations. So instead of starting with a function of one variable, let's start with a function of two variables. So we'll say suppose f of x, y is a function. And then suppose, actually before we do that, let's just draw, let's draw two pictures here so we have a similar situation. So think of f of x, y, I don't know, maybe like a paraboloid, it's always a good function to think about. Now, let's suppose that I pick a point. So suppose we choose the point um, x0, y0, and go to the function. So I'll draw a few pictures as we go through this, because a few pictures will help. try and make a habit of labeling my axes. So I go to x0, y0, which is some point in the plane. It may be, say, right here. This is an xy plane. Really, it's the point x0, y0, comma 0, but I'm going to not worry about that for now. So then we go up to the function. We get to this point, which is x0, y0, f of x0, y0. This is on the graph of f. Of x, y. So then the analogy here is there's no tangent line, but there is a tangent plane. Right? So we can then construct the tangent plane. which is, this is sound a bit redundant, but that's okay, which is tangent 2f at the point. So visually what's going on here is we have, I'm going to draw this without an axis for now, so we'll keep it a little tidier. We've got this point that we just found right here. And I'm going to construct the plane, which will make green. This is the tangent plane. So it sort of rests nicely and, and uh, tangent to the surface at that point. And what we see is an immediate analogy. We see that if some other xy, we'll just say some xy is close x0, y0, then f of f at that xy is close to the tangent plane. And again, like in the previous picture, we can sort of zero in on this little area right here. Right, those two things are close. Right. Now, if it helps, you sort of visually see what's going on. If you don't think of yourself as too visual a person, um, if you took a side view, you might have something like this. Just to really hone in. You sort of lose a dimension, but you get the idea. So you're looking at a plane on its side right there. But it can help to see what's going on visually. And then the point where they meet is right there. 
And again, you can tell that they're really, really close. As long as, you know, as long as you stay pretty close to original x0, y0, then your f of x, y will be close to the tangent plane. So then the looming question is, like, okay, what's the equation of the tangent plane? So then we ask this question. We say, well, how do I how do I find the equation of a plane? So I need two things. I need a point and a normal vector. So a point is easy. We have a point. The point is x0, y0, f of x0, y0. The normal vector is this big question. So um, what we'll do is this. We'll say, like, how do we, if I have a surface, because the graph of f is a surface, how do I get a vector which is normal to this? So let me clear up the left side of the screen. So visually, this is what we're looking for. For our surface, at the point that we're interested in, right here the vector that we need uh, to make it green needs to be this vector right here it could go up or down or rather in or out doesn't really matter as long as we get something this is what we want so we had a fact that came up when we did the gradient that um, if you take the gradient of a function of three variables we get a vector which is perpendicular to the level surface of that function. So if we take the, the gradient of a function of three variables, I'm underlining the three for a very specific reason, we get a vector which is perpendicular to the level surface of that function. So the problem is, or the situation is, it's not really a problem, we just need to deal with it, is that we have a function of two variables. We have z equals f of x, y. Like for example, z equals x squared plus y squared, or z equals x squared y plus xy, or z equals anything like that. Right? It's a sort of a standard function of two variables. If I take this gradient, if I take the gradient of f, that doesn't work because it's not a function of three variables. So what we'll do is we rewrite this. And so what we'll do in this case is we're going to move everything to one side. And now on the left-hand side, now we have a function of three variables. And moreover, when this function, we can see this in this equation, when this function equals zero, we get the graph that we're looking for, right? So in this case, when this equals zero, It's the same as, like it's literally just the same equation as this. But setting it equal to zero, this is a level surface. So it's a bunch of arrows here. So in other words, what we need to do is we need to take the gradient of this new thing, right? So in other words, taking the gradient of f of x, y minus z works. So we go, okay, so what's the gradient of f of x, y minus z? Well, we take the derivative with respect to x, so that's f sub x of x, y, i. 
you take the derivative with respect to y. And so the z goes away here because we, the derivative of z with respect to x is 0. Then we take the derivative with respect to y. And then we take the derivative with respect to z. And the first bit vanishes, and we get minus 1k. So this, this right here, this is our n. I'm going to say this is green, because then it matches the green vector up, up top. This is our normal. So this is the vector that goes along with a point to construct the tangent plane. Right? So you may recall the equation of a plane. We can use these two things. So together, let's just uh, put the two facts together that we need uh, for the tangent plane. We had our point which was x0, y0, z0. We have our normal, which is this thing right here. Actually, let's be cautious. Um, when we say this is our normal, I'm being a bit sloppy. Right? So this gradient that we just did, this thing, um, this is the normal in general. We need this at our point. So the gradient is um, is normal to the surface, but this is the generic gradient. We need the gradient at our specific point. So our particular normal will be f sub x of x0, y0, i, plus f sub y of x0, y0, j, minus 1k, because we're interested at the point where x is x0 and y is y0. So equation of a plane. Plus the tangent plane has equation. Remember how this works. I take the normal vector as the coefficients. Multiply by x minus the point. And then same for y. Y minus the point. Same for z and z minus the point. Sorry, it's a little jammed in there, tidy it up a bit. Sorry, that's crammed in. Um, so this is the equation of the tangent plane. So what I'm going to do next is turn that into a function. So solve for z. Like when we did tangent line, we solve for y. When we do tangent plane, we solve for z. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the z that's over on the right and I'm going to add it to both sides. Actually I made a little, not a tragic mistake, but I wrote something that wasn't quite accurate. This z0, um, this z0, little mistakes all over the place. This is f of x0, y0. This is f of x0, y0. So when we solve for z here, right, so I move the z over to the right and then I'm just going to sort of reorganize it a bit. So I have a plus f of x0, y0. I have a plus f sub x, x0, y0 times x minus x0, plus a f sub y, x0, y0, y minus y0. That's the, that's the sort of the function of the tangent plane. So here's the conclusion. is that if x, y is approximately, let's, we don't need the is there, that'll just clutter it, is approximately x0, y0, then f of x, y is approximately this thing. So this is the formula for tangent plane approximation right here that we're going to use. And we'll just do a couple simple examples with it. And then we'll make a comment about, um, about what happens in three dimensions. So 
So here's an example. Let's say um, let's approximate the square root of 3.02 squared plus 6.95. So a few things we note, right? So um, I've engineered this problem specifically so you can guess like a nice value that's nearby or, or a C a nice value that's nearby. So what we notice is that, that this is um, close to square root of three squared plus seven. Uh, which is nice, right? Because that's the square root of 16. And now that we're not just going to say we're not going to stop at that. That's just approximating the point. So what we're going to do is we'll do this, right? So the, the reason I mention this, this is close to the square root of 3 squared plus 7, is to make us realize that that's going to be our anchor point. So we're going to use x0, y0 equal to 3, 7 and let f of x, y be the square root of x squared plus y. So the reason for this is because now we're approximating f of 3.02, 6.95. And that's the thing we're looking for. So that lets us see um, how this fits into the the conclusion over on the right hand side. So by tangent plane approximation, we can see that f of 3.026.95 is approximately f of 37. So I'm just filling in values plus f sub x of 37 times x minus x naught. So that's 3.02 minus 3. Plus, let me. I'm gonna make some space over on the right here. So uh, there we go. So plus f sub y of three seven times six point nine five minus seven, and that'll be our result, right? So I need to calculate all this, of course, but this is the tangent plane approximation. So just to sort of before we go any further, just to notice that we we pick a point which is nearby but nice. We pick the function that sort of matches the function that we're trying to calculate. Now I made the x the first variable and the y the second variable. It doesn't matter. You could have done square root of y squared plus x. No difference. Just the numbers would have been switched around a bit. And then that lets us see what, what we're approximating right here. And then we can just chuck that into the tangent plane approximation formula. So then what we do is we just, just charge you the calculations. We go like, well, we know f of 3, 7, because that's the square root of 3 squared plus 7. That's the square root of 16, which is 4. We then find f of x. So f of, or f sub x. So f of xy is x squared plus y to the 1 half. So this is 1 half x squared plus y to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the inside. So f sub x of 3, 7. These values should all turn out to be pretty nice because we're plugging in a nice point. I mean, they may still have radicals, for example, maybe, but usually not because uh, things are pretty. So this is 3 squared plus 7 to the minus 1 half times 2x. So 3 squared plus 7 is 16. 16 to the minus 1 half is 1 over the square root of 16, which is 1 fourth. So this is 1 half times one fourth times six. So this is six eighths, which is three fourths. And we do f sub y of x, y. This is one half x squared plus y to the minus one half. Now the derivative of the inside is one because it's with respect to y. And I get one half. This next value is exactly the same thing. Don't need to do this twice. So this is one half times one fourth times one, which is one eighth. So then, when it, then we're good. So we can say that f of three point oh two 
6.95. This is approximately f of 37, which is 4, plus f sub x of 37, which is 3 fourths, times 3.02 minus 3, which is 0 0.02, plus f sub y of 37, which is 1 eighth, times 6.95 minus 7, which is negative 0 0.05. And that's our approximation. Now, of course, this can be simplified if you like. I'm not going to worry about that because really, um, this is just arithmetic from there on out. And, uh, and it's much easier to check your answers when you're looking at things like this. So uh, let me just do one more quick, and then I want to make a couple comments about, one, about how this works if you go to three dimensions, and two is just to sort of look back at what the parallel is to one dimension. Um, so here, one more example. And what I'll do is let me clear the screen except for the conclusion so that the green box in the lower right is just going to stay there, and we'll just do another example around it so it's always handy. So let's do this. Let's approximate. Uh, let me turn this back. To black. So let's approximate, say, the sine of 9 pi over 20, cosine of 9 pi over 30. So the first thing we do is we find a nearby point that's nice, right? So in this case, if you notice, 9 pi over 20 is really close to 10 pi over 20 which is pi over 2, and that's nice. And 9 pi over 30 is approximately nine, uh, 10 pi over 30, which is pi over 3, and that's nice. So we want to pick nearby points which are nice. So then what we do is we let f of x, y, that's a bit sloppy there, be sine of x, cosine of y. And then we want f of 9 pi over 20, 9 pi over 30. And we're going to use x0, y0, the nice point is pi over 2, pi over 3. So again, we're using the, the fact on the right. And so what we need to do is we need to know f of x0, y0, that's um, sine of pi over 2, cosine of pi over 3. So sine of pi over 2 is 1, cosine of pi over 3, or pi over 3 is 1 half. And then we find f sub x, so this is uh, 1 half in total. So f sub x of x, y, that's the derivative with respect to x. So cosine y is the constant. So I get cosine x, cosine y, and derivative with respect to x at pi over 2, pi over 3. That's the cosine of pi over 2 times the cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Whatever that is doesn't matter. The result is 0. Then we take f sub y of x, y. Now we take the derivative with respect to um, y. So sine is a constant, and derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we get negative sine x sine y. And we take f sub y of pi over 2, pi over 3. This is the negative sine of pi over 2 times the sine of pi over 3. This is negative sine of pi over 2 is 1 again, sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. This is negative root 3 over 2. Thus, f of x, y that we want so remember what this is, is approximately f of x0, y0. So we found that that was 1 half. Plus f sub x of x0, y0, which is 0, times 
x. Now, this is a zero here, so what I'm about to write doesn't really matter, but I'm going to write it anyway just so we can see how it fits into the formula. So the x in this case is 9 pi over 20, and the x sub 0 in this case is pi over 2. Then we have f sub y at that point, which is negative root 3 over 2. Then we have y minus y is 0. So the y in this case is 9 pi over 30 minus pi over 3. And that's our final answer. So again, I'm not going to worry about simplifying it right now. Uh, it doesn't really make things any better or any, you know, it's just arithmetic from there on out. So that's really it. And so what I want to end on are just two sort of interesting notes to close on. So let me clear the screen and then I'll make those notes. Uh, so the first note is maybe more relevant because it's sort of how we expand this to three dimensions. And the fourth note is just a general note about Taylor expansions. So we'll say, I don't know which number I'm on. I think I'm on four, but it might be three. It doesn't matter. So closing notes. A, um, let's say expansion or extension, if you like, to three variables. So the nice thing about working it out for two variables is you can basically see how it's going to work. So here's the one variable case. Uh, this is what we said, f of x is approximately f of x zero. This is back with the tangent line. The two variable, which we just worked out, this is where the tangent plane So you can see what happens is we pick up two terms basically one for each derivative so the three variable you can probably make an educated guess and this is sort of harder to drive in the in a visual sense because the analogy you know we go from a tangent line to a tangent plane to a then you might ask what's next. So really what's going on is we're sort of now in a four-dimensional space and we have a three-dimensional tangent um, cube, if you like, or tangent, you know, three-dimensional space. And so it's not so easy to visualize, but it's really easy to see what's happening. Like you can, you know, you probably, if you had one guess to know what I'm about to write down or what I'm writing down, you'd probably get it right. So I just put put these in everywhere that needs to be that they need to be there. And then I chuck on an extra term at the end. And then you could keep going, right? You could go to four variables, five variables, etc. Right, which we don't. I mean we'll we'll basically do two and occasionally might run into three. But you know. This is not uncommon in calculus. So once you bump from one variable to two vari one variable to two variables, you can immediately see what's going to happen. So the last note is, uh, you know, you might think this is pretty rudimentary because you're like, well, when would you ever use this, right? So really, this is academic in the sense that that what you're learning is the first steps of a Taylor expansion, and just like in Calc two, when you expanded the one variable case, you can go further with these, right? So these. And we won't do this. Um, if you're interested in this, this comes up in, in sort of second semester advanced calculus. So these all extend, extend to further better approximations. All right, so in other words, if we went up to the second one, this can go further. Now this isn't part of the, you know, what we just did, of course, but this can go further up here. All right, so you could go, you can add like a quadratic term and a cubic term and so on. Um, and that's sort of really what happens in the quote unquote real world when you're dealing with these functions and you need to approximate them at certain places. You use these very big Taylor expansions when you can't get a hold of actual values, but the calculus gets much more difficult. And so it's not easy for us to do uh, with just our Calc 3 knowledge. But that's just to give you some insight as to this isn't the end game, right? You don't stop and be like, I've done it a tangent plane approximation. It's just the beginning of a big approximation process. So that is it for 13.7.